Well, a recent Time Magazine cover story on the childless couple has stirred up a lot of uh, argument and uh, controversy. The um, photo on the cover pretty much sums up the argument. It shows this young, very fit couple, and they're lounging languidly on a beach, and they're gazing up at the camera with blissful smiles, <laughs> and no child anywhere in sight. Well, the article is arguing not just that this is increasingly the case in America, but it's making a kind of moral argument that it's okay, it's a legitimate choice for couples to make just to have no children at all. The phrase having it all was used by feminists, you know, many decades ago uh, to say that a woman can have both family and career, but now it's being used to, I guess, indicate that you can have a life that's unencumbered by uh, annoying and expensive and, and uh, difficult uh, children. First of all, you know, to go back to the uh, objective side of this issue, there's no question that the birth rate is um, low. In fact, it's the lowest it's ever been in America in recorded history, so going back 100 years. It's even exceeded the low birth rate that followed the, uh, the Great Depression. So there was this economic crash that was followed by a sort of baby bust. You know, there was a, a crash in the number of children. Well, our childless rate has uh, exceeded even that. We're not quite as bad as Europe, uh, where it's totally crashed. Um, look in, in Italy, they say now uh, one out of four women go through their childbearing years without ever having a child. So in once uh, you know, heavily uh, Catholic Christian Europe, the, the uh, birth rate's gone dramatically down. So what are the reasons for this? Well, the article explores a number of things, but they, they cluster around um, a lot of subjective choices. So people say, look, I just don't want children. I've never had a desire for children. Women that will say, I never played with dolls as a kid. I was just never into the child thing. Um, many talk about a career. You know, I want to have my career and, and children and, and family is just uh, going to distract from that too much. Um, some would comment simply on the cost that now estimates are it costs a quarter of a million dollars you know, to raise a child from infancy to uh, going off to college, and so uh, couples just can't afford it. One of my favorite remarks is from the comedian Margaret Cho. She said, babies scare me more than anything. Uh, when I read that, I, I thought of the number of um, horror movies today that have a child as the focus of, of fear. You ever notice that? that? A lot of movies, what's really frightening is a child. Well. Margaret Cho kind of admitted that. I mean, babies, children scare me more than anything else. Another thing that came up in the article was that uh, in line very much with the tenor of our times, um, childless couples feel victimized. They're claiming a victim status. In a culture that still puts a huge premium on children, advertising and movies and TV and so on, they feel, you know, kind of ostracized and like second-class citizens, so they're claiming victim status. Um, they're banding together in groups to, for mutual support. There was a group they described, I think it was North Carolina, where people, you know, they, they eat together and they, they have uh, sports and activities together. Uh, and one of the women in that group said, look, I, I, we want to just do whatever we want. And that's why we banded together for <laughs> self-protection. Well, now here's what struck me in, in the course of this, reading this article. The enormous, really exclusive focus on private desire. What this comes down to is people's private desire. Some people are into children, great. Others aren't. Just like some people are into apples, some are into oranges. Some are into baseball, some are into football. It's just a matter of private choice. I would never think like, boy, he's a baseball fan. You shouldn't be watching football games. I'd never say, hey, I like apples. You shouldn't eat oranges. You know, those are just matters of, of private taste. Well, this issue is seen exclusively as that kind of, of matter. Just as I tolerate your choice to have children, you should tolerate my choice not to have children. It all comes down to private desire, to the sovereignty of freedom. And see, that's why in our country, as I've said many times, that's begun to run amok. Freedom, yes, but see, freedom is always in relation to truth and value. Freedom is not simply um, uh, independent of all that. Rather, freedom is ordered to objective truths and values. And that's what I see missing very much in, um, in this article. Think for a second. Go back to um, the initiation rituals that you can find among really all the peoples of the world, the primal peoples of the world. I'll talk about the initiation ritual of a, of a young man. The man is, is the young kid, is taken out of his family setting. 
He's effectively kidnapped by the elders of the tribe. He's marked in some way. He's scarred in some way to remind him that life is challenging, difficult. He's initiated into the lore of the tribe, the great history and lessons of the tribe. He's then compelled to make his way in the, in the wilds of nature, whether it's the forest or the jungle or whatever. Finally, he's expected to commune with spiritual power. Only having gone through all of these initiations is he ready to come back now to serve the tribe well. Notice the whole focus of this is to draw the young person into a whole world of values that go far beyond him. His life isn't about him. It's about the way he can contribute to his family, to his tribe, to nature, even as he's part of a divine purpose and plan. I would argue what we're seeing now with this hyper stress on individual choice, private freedom, you see a sea change culturally. Freedom comes alive only in relation to these higher values. So look at the question of, do I have a child? Hey, I don't like babies. They scare me. I won't have a child. Uh, It doesn't work with my career. I won't have a child. It's just not my thing. See, all of that is private, subjective choice. Classically, I would say up until very recent times, that choice would be made in relation to values, such as, well, how does this contribute to my family? How does it contribute to my culture? How does it contribute to the human race? How is it part of the great rhythms and purposes of nature? Finally, how is it ingredient in the plans of God? Think of now the book of Genesis. Go forth and multiply. There's something divine. There's something, something ingredient in the divine purpose about having children. Now, mind you, just to be clear, I'm not talking about here about couples that have trouble conceiving, etc. Et I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this absolute valorization of sovereign choice that brackets all those other realms I've been describing, that brackets the objective values that ought to contextualize private choice. See, finally, and and I go back to that uh, photo on the cover of the Time magazine. It's about me. It's about what satisfies me, what I find subjectively satisfying. That's what it's all about. You like children, I don't. See, that is a sort of cancer in our culture. When, when private choice is so valorized that freedom's relationship to higher values is lost, your life is finally not about you, and that's what makes life really worth living. 